Yeah, it's really interesting that, isn't it? The power of story and the power of drama and, and how important that is to, to society. Because, yeah, this story has been around for a long time. The BBC podcast has been out there for a long time. Journalists have been reporting on it and actually, in some ways, been sitting on it for 20 years. Yeah. So great that that announcement's been made today. Absolutely, everybody must be exonerated. Do need to look at the, you know, the amount of money, I agree with you. But I think this does show big questions about actually how we run public services. Um, this is my second career broadcasting. Before this, I worked for many, many years, kind of running charities and working in the public sector as a senior person. And I, I think we have got to look back at how we maintain public services, public bodies, um, how we keep values in there, not bringing in a lot of the stuff from business that says things like corporate reputation matters more than what we're trying to do, you know, because some of that was at the heart of this, mm. people preserving a corporate reputation at all costs. And I also think, which goes, goes on the Fujitsu thing, I think it's really interesting you're saying Fujitsu should pay for this as well. I really question commercial confidentiality when it comes to public contracts for public services and for public bodies. And um, if we want to look at a Brexit benefit, potentially the ability of us to say if you get public money and taxpayers' money in a taxpayer contract, it's all public and we can all look at it and we can all scrutinise it because we need to know what Fujitsu were contracted to do well, and what their responsibilities are. I'm sure there are investigations. Uh, you know, it under... seems like sometimes on this go for affirmation of service rather than accountability. You see, for me, um, Albie, this is all tied into what kind of democracy do we have and who controls Britain and, and where are ordinary people, where are our voices in this? And this so is a really a... archaic system about the establishment holding on to power and going, you're my mate, I'm going to give you a really high honour and if you're lucky enough, you might even be able to uh, set the legislation. But would you argue, no would you argue that was... The... I think we live in a society and there's nothing more basic than feeding our children. I really but think parents that. can do that. Um, but the truth of the matter is that at the moment, millions and millions of families can't afford to feed their children and it's not parents' fault. It's because of everything that's going on around them, cost of living crisis. Latest figures on that. You said one point, I think you said 1.8 or 1.9 million children need it. Actually, the latest research said that there's 4 million children in the UK living in food poverty. Um, that's either one in three or one in four children aren't getting the food that they need. So actually going by who is eligible for free school meals at the moment is not an indication of how many children need it. Um, you know, this is so basic. It helps children's education. We know they learn better. We know they interact better when they're fed. We are, what is it, the sixth richest country in the world and we're saying we can't afford to make sure that every child in Britain has at least one decent meal. And I would say to you, you say, don't, don't give this to the, the children of millionaires. Well, actually, that's what the tax system's for. So if we tax people properly, if we actually make our tax system much more progressive so people who earn more are paying more tax... How much should we be taxing can, high earners? We can get that money back. We can get that money back. I'm more worried that children are starving. Four million children, potentially. What? There was so we have to, as parents, take a bit of responsibility for what our children well, are eating do and, take, and feeding them. Do parents do take responsibility, but this isn't a level playing field. I think it's dead easy for us to sit here in, in the TV studio and say, well, parents should be doing, parents should be doing that. When you know loads of people are working such long hours, they're struggling with the cost of living crisis. For loads of people, it's a struggle just to get through every single day. And parents are out there doing, most of them are doing the absolute best that they can, but sometimes the resources aren't there. We've taken cooking classes out of schools. Loads of people don't know how to cook. They don't know what a decent meal is because we, we don't teach that in school. I mean, I know that's one of my things is that I think we teach the wrong things in school. Um, we don't teach that in school. You know, I remember um, interviewing someone from one of the Jamie Oliver projects in mm -hmm. Bradford where they'd set up a community kitchen um, and it was a fantastically successful um, community kitchen there where they were teaching people to cook and there were loads of families there where they just had never been Taught and wouldn't that be? And we've that's all been done voluntarily. Wouldn't that be a better spend of money than on subsidising or, or, or paying for meals for millionaires' children using that taxpayer no, money for cooking lessons? Because wouldn't that I be a think... better? Use of money. You know, you, you, I think what you are saying is because you're worried about this going to a small number of people, we're going to let 
It's not six million people masses, by your estimation. Masses of children fall six out of the minute not a small you number. the minute you means test, the minute you don't make things universal, people fall out of the system. I mean, we're much better to properly tax people who earn loads of money and make sure that everyone in in our country, in the sixth largest country in the world, has a decent meal okay, in the stomachs fun. every day. Back but I also go back to your lady with the fabulous hair, who I don't know her name. <laughs> I do apologise. Okay. Gorgeous. Yeah. yeah but and I also, I cycle and. I I can tell you it's not fun cycling, certainly not as a woman when you're going down a certain you very, a very bike. lumpy... You know, yeah. Yeah. we need a national flood strategy. I think that's becoming really, really clear. Climate change means that we're going to have more and more of these potholes. Mm. We've got to do something... I think we've got to take kind of quite a long-term view on it and have a proper strategy. And can I just say that that can't include pinching... I'm looking straight... Can't include pinching our money for rail services in the north to fix London's potholes, cos that just isn't fair. Well, that's the problem, Britain. I take the point that Peg makes about local authorities being stripped of funding due to austerity. The government had to make some very difficult positions after Labour spent all the money before 2010. Did they, though? There is, yes, they did. Yes, there is they rumours did. there was they, a mistake they in the spreadsheet. They left and a note saying there's no money left. Well, we could argue that one. But the point one. is, it's that, a good that thing. Little, uh, graphic that came out that I can't believe anyone actually approved. For HS2? And it said yes, 235 million to improve roads in London. It said a Network North project rerouted HS2 funding. We still don't have a decent train, I'm going to say it, a decent train line between Leeds and Manchester, uh, two of the biggest cities in the country. We don't even have one. So you and think there's a been rerouted. I think there was, I think there was an element of it. Let's now speak to... Peg, how do you feel about getting volunteers to do this sort of work? Should we be relying on volunteers for that? Do you know what? I've spent half my career working with community organisations that are running and voluntary organisations, and I've managed loads. I've actually, you know, um, that's been a big part of of my career. So I'm really in favour of public services being, but not as an excuse for funding and not as a way of doing it on the cheap. And mm. to be quite honest, not when Westminster sits and says, you should do this volunteers. I'm in favour of people choosing to do things themselves mm. and it being community led. I mean, I just think, I think what Dave was saying is really interesting because I think one of the problems is we have really short term government in this country. So we can't develop long term strategy for dealing with big problems. And this road stuff is going to get worse because it's one of the aspects of climate change mm -hmm. and we've got to start properly thinking about how we plan what our country's like what our infrastructure is like and really thinking about what the impacts of climate change are going to be on that and and i think what dave was saying at the end there is interesting there's so many things where if we do a we save money in b but our system of government and our short termism doesn't mm. allow us to actually do that looking overall what are the costs of things well can i just say some when i first heard this i i pictured that scene in the crown in the last series where Tony Blair goes to talk to the Queen about modernising and um, he comes up with all these ideas about how to modernise and she sits there and she kind of, they run through all these archaic, weird jobs and posts and things that, that we have set up for the royal family and it made me think a bit of that, you know, some of these things do have to but change. that's part of the tradition, that's part of what makes well, us Britain Well, in that you could see all these different things that you could say, but they're part of the tradition, we've got to keep them. To, so to are, you, honest, are you a Republican then? No, well, yes, of course. Well, of course, I don't believe we should have a monarchy that's linked to our constitutional uh, situation. Okay, we're you know, drifting. But we're drifting. So, Angela, thank losing you for your those hats wouldn't change our country. Yeah.